Well, brethren, the Lord gave one of our members a dream about Donald Trump, although he didn't know that the dream was about Donald Trump. And when I began to interpret it, we found out that it was about Donald Trump. So I would like to share this dream with you and the prophetic interpretation that came forth from the Lord to me for all of you. This is the dream. Hi, Sheila, I had a dream this morning. I was fastening some kind of a cabinet to a wall. The wall was very high, and I was on a platform holding the cabinet up against the wall. Someone was fastening the cabinet to the wall while I was holding it tight against the wall. I looked down, and I was very far up in the air. Then my dream switched. I was with Michelle, my ex-wife, and we had a little baby. The baby had to go to the doctor for a shot, but Michelle couldn't do it, so I was in the office with the doctor. As the doctor put the needle in the thigh of the little baby, the baby started to cry. I was there to comfort it. So this is my response. I was fastening some kind of cabinet to a wall. Jesus is the wall. The wall was very high, the cabinet the wall was very high, and I was on a platform holding the cabinet up against the wall. The cabinet is the cabinet of President-elect Donald J. Trump. Someone was fastening the cabinet to the wall as I was holding it tight against the wall. The Lord is involved in President-elect Donald J. Trump's choice of his cabinet. I looked down, and I was very far up in the air. This cabinet is anointed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Then my dream switched. I was with Michelle, my ex-wife. Michelle represents the church because this gentleman who had this dream, his wife did some very unkind things in the situation, so she's a negative archetype in this dream. Michelle represents the church that is separated from God because of sin. She more, she more or less forced this divorce because of, because of the man's relationship with Jesus Christ. So Michelle represents the church that is separated from God because of sin. And we had a little baby. The baby is the man-child produced by the church in Revelation chapter 12. The baby had to go to the doctor for a shot. The baby or the church is ill because of sin. The man-child is ill because of sin. But Michelle couldn't do it, so I was in the office with the doctor. The man having the dream represents the remnant in the church that is repenting. As the doctor and the church is not repenting, or well, they cannot repent, so there is a remnant that is repenting. As the doctor put the needle in the thigh of the little baby, it began to cry. And I say the thigh represents the spiritual reproductive part of, of, a, of a human. And that comes from Numbers 521. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people, when the Lord did make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. And this is the test for adultery in a woman. Revelation 19, 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. That means the Lord Jesus Christ has repro spiritual reproductive ability. He can, he can impregnate humanity with his immortal and eternal life. The baby started to cry. That is corrective judgment that is coming upon the church. And the, the man who had the dream, the dream said, I was there to comfort it. So there will be revival, there will be comfort from the Lord after the corrective judgment. And now my response by email. Good morning. I just read Isaiah chapter 22 in the New Living Translation. And it is amazing what it says about what is happening in this country today and about President Obama and President-elect Trump. I think it interprets your dream from yesterday. According to chapter 22 of Isaiah, President-elect Donald Trump and his cabinet are being nailed to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the wall, who is preparing to do the job that God has given him to do.
the Lord has highly exalted him. Second part of the message of your dream. The second part of your dream indicates either the backslidden church or fallen America, or both. Michelle, your ex-wife, signifies the backslidden church that has produced a sickly spiritual child. You represent the remnant that is strong enough in Christ Jesus to make the sickly baby, to take the sickly baby to the doctor, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God the baby gets the injection, which is the corrective judgment. We knew this because we know this because the solution to the baby's problem, the injection, is painful. But even though the baby cries, which is corrective judgment, it appears from the content of the whole dream that the baby will be okay. And if the baby is okay, he will heal the church. In other words, a correction is coming which will be painful, but will result in a good end. When the church is healed, the baby first, then the country will be healed, and then the world. This dream sounds like a revival is coming. That is, you are comforting the baby is the revival after the corrective judgment, which is the injection to the baby. Then a second member of our congregation, unbeknownst of the, about this dream, had a word, and I'll read that to you his, from his email to me. The Lord reminded me of the following at the end of Sunday's comments. I called you the next day after the election to tell you this. Election night, I stayed up until the winter until the winner was announced. The next day, while in my bathroom under the shower, these thoughts entered my mind. I, I am about to reveal Lem to the to the public. The foundation is put in place. Lem has a lot to do had a lot to do with the election. Many messages paved the way to the end results. The spirit for the last eight years has not been favorable to Lim. The people were not prepared to receive this message. Now some are prepared to receive and welcome the Lim message. Mr. Trump, the Lord speaking, Mr. Trump is my vessel to bring change. The spirit on him will flow to others who I have prepared. It was never about Mr. Trump. He is the one that I have chosen, as I did during the days of Israel, for example. Moses, Joshua, David, Jonah, Elijah, Daniel, and Paul. And now I'm going to read to you Isaiah chapter 22 of the New Living Translation with some of my comments interjected. The heading in the, in the scripture is, A Message About Jerusalem. This message came to me concerning Jerusalem, the Valley of Vision. What is happening? Why is everyone running to the rooftops? The whole city is in a terrible uproar. What do I see in this reveling city? Bodies are lying everywhere, killed not in battle, but by famine and disease. All your leaders have fled. They surrendered without resistance. My comment is our Republican leaders have failed us. They have surrendered without resistance. The people tried to slip away, but they were captured too. That's why I said, leave me alone to weep. Do not try to comfort me. Let me cry for my people as I watch them being destroyed. Oh, what a day of crushing defeat. What a day of confusion and terror brought by the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies upon the valley of vision. The walls of Jerusalem have been broken and cries of death echo from the mountainside. Elamites are the arches with their chariots and charioteers. The men of Kerr hold up the shields. Chariots fill your beautiful valleys and charioteers storm your gates. We certainly have our gates being stormed. Judah's defenses have been stripped away. You are the armory for your weapon. You run the armory for your weapons. You inspect the breaks in the walls of Jerusalem. You store up water in the lower pool. You survey the houses and tear some down for, some to, for stone to strengthen the walls. Between the city walls, you build a reservoir for water from the old pool, but you never ask for help from the one who did all this to you. My comment, there is little or no repentance in the church. 
which takes no responsibility for the state of the nation. And there was little, if any, at all recognition from the church, certainly not from the citizens of America, that we are under judgment from God. Back to, the, back to Isaiah. You never considered the one who planned this long ago. That's Jehovah. At that time, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, called you to weep and mourn. He told you to shave your heads in sorrow for your sins and to wear clothes of burlap to show your remorse. But instead, you dance and play. You slaughter cattle and kill sheep. You feast on meat and drink wine. You say, let us feast and drink, for tomorrow we die. The Lord of Heaven's armies has revealed this to me. Till the day you die, you will never be forgiven for this sin. That is the judgment of the Lord, the Lord of Heaven's armies. Do you hear that? But instead of repenting, instead of confessing your sins and repenting, you dance and play. You slaughter cattle and kill sheep. You feast on meat and drink wine. You say, let's feast and drink, for tomorrow we die. The Lord of heaven's armies has revealed this to me, says the prophet. Till the day you die, you will never be forgiven for your sins. That is the judgment of the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies. But of course, today we have the option to die to our carnal nature and rise from the dead in Christ Jesus. Continuing on uh, with the prophet Isaiah chapter 22. And from here on in, I, I perceive this to be a message for Mr. Obama. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army has said to me. Confront Shebna, the palace administrator. Confront the chief executive of this country and give him this message. Who do you think you are? And what are you doing here? Building a beautiful tomb for yourself? A monument high up in the rock? For the Lord is about to hurl you away, mighty man. He is going to grab you crumple you into a ball and toss you away into a distant barren land. There you will die and your glorious chariots will be broken and useless. You are a disgrace to your master. Yes, I will drive you out of office, says the Lord. I will pull you down from your high position and then I will call my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, to replace you. My comment. President-elect Donald J. Trump is the face of Christ Jesus, is the political face of Christ Jesus at this time in this country. I will dress him in your royal robes and will give him your title and your authority. And he will be a father to the people of Jerusalem and Judah. I will give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens the doors, no one will be able to close them. And when he closes the doors, no one will be able to open them. He will bring honor to his, fam his family name, for I will drive him firmly in place like a nail in the wall. This is talking about Donald J. Trump now. He will bring honor to his family name, for I will drive him firmly in place like a nail in the wall. They, they will give him great responsibility and he will bring honor to even the lowliest members of his family. The citizens of America are his family. But the Lord of Heaven's armies also says, the time will come when I will pull out the nail that fastened, that seemed so firm. It will come out and fall to the ground. Everything it supports will fall with it. The Lord has spoken. Now someone wrote to me and said, well, that last that last um, verse is very depressing. Let me give it to you again. But the Lord of Heaven's armies also says, the time will come when I will pull out the nail. Now remember, Donald J. Trump is nailed to the wall and his cabinet, nailed to the wall, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, to do his work in this hour. But the time will come that I will pull out the nail that seems so firm. It will come out and fall to the ground. Everything it supports will fall with it. I, the Lord, have spoken. My response to that, there, brethren, there's always a positive, a positive answer to every judgment that's in the scripture, is this, that the Lord is holding up the country and the world right now through Donald J. Trump. But the time is coming that a great revival is coming, and only the people 
that rely on the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation and deliverance and to meet their every need to overcome hunger, famine, and every wickedness that, that is being foisted upon the world from the evil that is, that is manifesting in the world today. That only those that transfer their consciousness into the Lord Jesus Christ will survive because the government will be taken down. The governments of men will be taken down. I hope I'm explaining this properly. The Lord's not taking down the, the United States government. What he's saying is that Donald J. Trump can only do so much for the country and for the world. Everyone will have to answer to the Lord for themselves when judgment falls upon the nation. And judgment must fall, brethren. At the very least, there has to be a financial correction. The people of the country are in a, are in a spiritual morass. There has to be a moral, a moral revival in this nation. And the only one that will survive this moral revival will be those who can confess their sins and repent and transfer into the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone else that is, that is morally corrupt in the nation will come to an end. Not that the Lord's going to strike you down with a lightning bolt, but you will come to your end. Either your life will end or you'll have to get a disease and die. Brethren, the, the immorality in the nation cannot continue. Donald J. Trump was sent to save us in the, in the, in, by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ financially and, and by correcting the international errors that have been made and by using the, the power of the United States president to overcome world communism, which is hiding under the name New World Order and globalism right now and global warming. He will, he will do God's will and save us from that evil. But on a spiritual level, everyone must answer to God or, or experience the consequences because of the moral corruption in the nation and the world today. We must come up out of our moral morass. And I hope that I explain that properly. This is the word that the Lord gave me, an interpretation of the dream of one of the members of our congregation. I hope it is a blessing to you listening to me. And God bless Donald Trump. I will say one more thing. Many Republicans and many conservatives, not Republicans, but conservatives, are very upset with Donald Trump's choices, a couple of Donald Trump's choices for his cabinet. I want to tell you my position. I have read this dream. I have received an interpretation from God. And I am going to trust God and trust Donald Trump. I'm going to trust Donald Trump that he's hearing from God to do what he should be doing. And I'm going to trust God to correct Donald J. Trump if he makes a mistake. But the bottom line is that my faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, all of this anger has to stop. Anger from the left against Donald J. Trump. Anger from, anger from his supporters that don't like what he's doing. You cannot second guess the man that has received the responsibility you need to support him and pray for him and stop being angry at him and raging at him and trust God that he will accomplish that God, that the Lord Jesus Christ will accomplish his goals. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will accomplish his father's goals. Father, his father is God. Okay. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will accomplish the goals of God through Donald J. Trump and the men and women appointed to his cabinet. I trust them, and I exhort you to trust them, to trust God, to trust the Lord Jesus, and get out of this hysteria that has gripped the nation and is gripping the nation. It has to stop. I encourage you all to be at peace, knowing that God's man has been elected, and God's purposes will surely be accomplished. And I say that in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Amen.